Hello, welcome to this video series on control structures. Uh, in this video, we're going to primarily focus on discussing um, the three structures, sequence, selection, and looping structures. And then we also discuss some things you will want to be considerate of when using these structures. So uh, there's two states to every programmer. I know exactly what I'm doing, and I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, when you're developing your programs, it's best to plan uh, your work ahead of time to think through all the various structures you're going to have in your program. Um, and I would say it's a better idea uh, to do something called pseudocode or um, creating a flowchart of how your program is going to function and operate uh, prior to actually coding it out. Um, another um, uh, helpful uh, thing people do is they will comment their code. Um, not necessarily comment the code, but use comments uh, and then write the code uh, fill in the code with uh, where the comments are placed inside of the uh, the file. And so those are some helpful strategies in terms of thinking through your program uh, before you actually touch the code or write the code uh, to kind of get an idea of how your program is going to function. So there's three different structures. There's sequence, there's selection, and there's looping. Um, and so with sequence, it's your, your input, your output, uh, you may have a calculation statement, um, but it's essentially performing a task. Selection, you come to a juncture in your program where you have to make a decision. Uh, and so you will see uh, structures such as if-else statements, if statements. Uh, sometimes those are called uh, single alternatives and dual alternatives. Uh, and then you have looping. You repeatedly do something until the condition uh, is met. Here's a video I would like for you to take a look at uh, that uh, demonstrates each of the three different uh, structures, the se sequence, selection, and looping structures. And then we'll take a look at, um, uh, I'll give a visual and give a look at some code uh, that will represent each of these uh, three structures. All right, so hopefully that video gave you a, a little bit of context in terms of how those three structures can be used. You can stack them, you can nest them, uh, and every application uh, that you use, whether it's a website or a mobile app, a console application, uh, you will find these three structures utilized uh, multiple times within a program. So there's sequence, again, input, output, calculation, declaring variables uh, would also be considered sequence and initializing variables. Um, you have decision structures, if statements, if else statements. Uh, and again, these uh, give you a visual of what that looks like. And so especially if you're new to programming or new to learning how to code, uh, working with a flow chart uh, may be helpful to kind of see how the code functions and operates. But then down here, I also provide you with code and what that would look like. So with this here is an if-else statement. So if this condition is true, yes, do this branch. Else, no, it's not true, do this branch. And that's what we sometimes would call a, it was what we call a dual alternative or a selection structure. Um, the next structure is a single alternative. Uh, you have some condition. If this condition is met, yes, it's true, then do this branch. But there's no alternative. And so in this case, it's a single alternative. And this is an example of the code. So if number one, num1 is less than or equal to num2, do this here if there's no other alternative. And where versus the dual alternative, if this condition is true, num1 is greater than or equal to num2, say 2 is greater than 5, but if this condition, condition is false, then it would output 2 is not greater than 5. And then you have the looping structure, where you want to do something competitively until the condition is met. And so and here uh, we ask the question, do this item in yellow until this condition is met. Um, and then once it's met, it continues on with the rest of the program. Here's a few considerations. One entry point, uh, and this just has to deal with uh, making a well-structured program. One entry point, no cross lines, continuous flow, stacking structures, and you can also nest structures. So here's an example of what that looks like. Uh, this is a, what we call a single alternative. So we'll have a condition, and this is also the pseudocode uh, on the right here where my mouse is hovering. So if condition H is true, yes. If you could say yes to that condition, do step J. Then we are, so, this, so we have, here we have single alternative, we have sequence, which is step J. And then here we have <clears throat> um, a looping structure. 
Uh, so if condition M is true, yes, we're going to go down and do a dual alternative selection structure. If condition O is true, yes, do sequence step P. If condition true is not true, then we do the alternative, which is going to be step Q, which is a selection stru uh, sequence structure. But then it continues to ask the question over and over until this condition M is met. Once uh, this condition is met, or once it's not met, uh, then you go down to step L, and then you go back to the overall structure, and you exit. So you see, multi, you see all three structures at play here. You see the single alternative, you see the sequence with step J, you see the looping structure, you see the dual alternative selection structure, um, but then also you'll see that these structures are nested within each other. Um, so uh, within the single alternative of Q, uh, condition H, you have the condition M structure that's nested uh, within this overall condition H structure or single alternative structure. And this is the pseudocode that matches this code here. And again, this is helpful to think through and plan before you begin to write code. Uh, that way you know exactly how the program is going to function and operate before you begin to put uh, the Java syntax uh, uh, in your source code. The other thing I want to mention here is that uh, is one entry and then one exit. And so we have one entry point here where my mouse is hovering and then one exit for this structure. Uh, same here for our looping structure, one entry, and then one exit. And so you don't have this line looking at the no branch, right, or crossing over to the no branch, and this will be considered a well-structured program. So here's a program that uh, may be helpful. It's called Flogarithm, uh, and it uses these, these shapes. So here's sequence, and what this program does is it allows the end user to uh, input three numbers and it'll give the output the highest number of the three that you entered. So if you run this program, we have some sequence that welcome us to, welcomes, welcomes us to the program. What I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to do a different view here. Let's do the variable and console so we can kind of see what happens. We'll start at the top. We'll run the program. You'll see that it'll step through. It basically declared our variables, initialized our variables. It did our output statement, um, and then we had we go into our looping structure while count is less than three. Here we have sequence, 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 sequence. Um, and so you'll see that the variables are initialized, and then we can go ahead and put a number for the and declare our first number in our random number array. We can do our second number, and then we can do twelve. So this program executes uh, and goes all the way through, um, all the way to the bottom here, but you can see the various structures and how the program operates. There's a way that you can step through this slowly and to see what happens. Um, but nonetheless, this is Flogarithm, uh, and it's a pretty cool program because it'll allow you to look at the pseudocode for this as well. And I believe, if my memory serves me correct, it'll show you the code for various languages. Um, so if this is a helpful tool, uh, so source code viewer. So it'll show you pseudocode, and if you want to look at it in Java, um, you can see what the code will look like in Java based on how you place these structures. Um, and like I say, if this is a helpful tool, you may want to consider downloading it. It's flogarhythm.org, uh, and begin, and uh, begin to, I would say, run through the tutorial that is on a website in terms of how to use it. Uh, but it may be helpful in terms of planning out your programs uh, and getting a visual of how the program functions uh, before you actually write the code. Um, so yeah, this gives you the the code here uh, in Java, but also it, it'll spew out the code in different different languages. So if you're looking at Python or Java, it does some finagling of the code to get it to work, but for the most part, you can get a good idea of of, of, uh, of the structures applied to different languages. So, all right. So hopefully this video is helpful um, in terms of understanding how we can visualize our code and use the three different structures, sequence, selection, and looping, uh, to plan out our program and, and basically see how those particular structures are uh, nested and stacked uh, to create a, a full exhaustive program. Stay tuned for the next video.